What's going on everyone? My name is Under the Radar and welcome back to the last WBE video for season three on my channel. Um, I want to start out this video by saying this is going to be the season recap. I'm going to go over a lot of my thoughts of the season. I'm going to be going over a lot of uh, what happened with me in the season, my team, what I think of my team, what I everything like literally if i have any thoughts about it i'm going to be talking about it so if you guys want to you don't have to have this video up just like listen to it in the background throw on some some music maybe team build for your own leagues while you're listening to this but that that's basically what this is going to be and i hope that you guys uh do do watch and you do enjoy uh, i had a very successful season in my opinion i had a phenomenal phenomenal season 10 and 5 uh was the final record after playoffs plus 20 differential I, I seriously cannot complain. I'm unbelievably happy. And more importantly, um, I'm, I feel as though I'm blessed, right? So real quick, let's talk about it. Um, being in the WBE was probably one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, it's not only helped my channel, which was awesome. I'm always down to like grow on a social media platform but on top of that this league alone introduced me some of to some of like the best people that i've ever met in my entire life like mv for example lives 45 minutes away from me right like we're friends irl now because of wbe like that's that's phenomenal um and because i was like in wbe like the Jamies, like from um from mbl like jamie keen jamie boy like i'm friends with them now like all because of WBE and I can truthfully say that I've never been I don't know I'm just really happy I'm really happy that I had the chance to be in WBE so Dan truthfully from the bottom of my heart thank you and I hope to come back next season I would love to come back next season uh, I such a phenomenal time such a phenomenal time so now that I've gotten that out of the way let's go ahead and talk about the team uh, this team was horseshit. It was awful to be blunt with you guys. I hated this team. Uh, I think it was terrible. Uh, my goal with this team was to go um, was to get to playoffs, but to go even, like to like to go seven and six. That was the goal. And I ended up going like what nine and four, and then in the regular season, which is phenomenal. Um, but so let's talk about why I think this team is awful for me personally. Um, First off, uh, I think that it this team is very, very bad at just having a speedy revenge killer. I was locked into bringing Darmanitan as my speedy revenge killer every single week. It was locked into being that choice scarfed user. Whereas in most of my other drafts, like if you're looking at uh, BBL, for example, I have a Noivern, I have a Mega Mewtwo, I have multiple setup users, I have multiple walls with priority that can be set up, that can be like revenge killers. I don't have that with this. I have multiple forms of priority in like... Extreme Speed Zygarde, Extreme Speed Raichu, Quick Attack, and Shadow Sneak, and Sucker Punch, but that's not good priority for uh, picking off opponents' teams, so uh, I don't really think that I had the best, like, offensive cleaners. Uh, my speed tiers were awful. If you look, I go from uh, 110, well, 113 to 110, 105, and then from 105, I go down to 95, and then from 95, I go down to 81. And then from 81 to 80, and then it just drops off. So I don't think my speed tiers were that good, which realistically, I don't think matters that much. It's just more so that I have my fastest mod is base 113 and superior. So things like Mega Alakazam, for example, it ran pretty much max HP, modest nature, and it still outsped my entire team naturally. So that sucks. Luckily, I did have some Trick Room options, which kind of sort of helped out, but I don't think it made it to where I could rely on trick room if that makes sense like my team isn't slow enough to rely on trick room my only trick room abuser is stack attacker uh, so that's eh. it's meh um so lack of really good revenge killers i only have darmanitan and i also think i have a really 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 bad wall core right so my wall core mainly consists of my Lodic, Wigglytuff, Mega Sableye. They're all extremely, extremely passive. My Lodic, I was able to make offensive in some aspects with competitive, but aside from that, they're all extremely, extremely passive. And that meant that my opponents could take advantage of that. Whereas typically, I like to have walls that can pivot 
with U-Turn, with Baton Pass, while also being able to still hit really, really hard. That's why I like Vaporeon. That's like base 110 special attack, which is really, really good. I can Baton Pass with it. I can heal up the rest of the team with it. So I think that uh, the lack of reliable walls also really hurt me. Um, and then the lack of setup on this team also really hurt me. Like, DD Zygarde is good. It's really good. However, with a four times ice weakness, it's very easy for an opponent to just slap on like ice beam on something and do a lot of damage to it. And in 10 mon format, everybody went and made sure they got a good fairy, meaning that it was really hard for me to set up on some walls. It, it was just very difficult for me to use DD Zygarde this season, in my opinion. I was much better at using like either special, uh, bulky, or like wall breaker mixed offensive. So. That's just kind of my opinion. So I don't think I had enough setup. I don't think I had enough revenge killers. And I don't think I had a very reliable wall core. Where I think this team did flourish. What I loved about this team. So Darmanitan is my favorite Pokemon. Like on the team. Obviously it went 22 and 6. Like that's phenomenal. Uh, Mesprit is one of my all time favorite mods. It didn't get very many kills. But it's still cool. Uh, it's one of my favorite bulky psychic types of all time. Um, where I think this team did do really, really well is the way that it pressured things. I think that the pressure stacking was really, really good. The things that Superior baited in, Darmanitan could take advantage of most of the time, and I was able to uh, play around that pretty well. For example, Superior baited in Heatran versus Gator. So if I was able to just pull a double into Darmanitan, I was able to to beat it basically unfortunately that game didn't really go as planned but that's that's just kind of the example that i was thinking of like superior had also baited in celebi i was able to do that um so yeah i think that i think that the baiting of this team was really really good uh and the pressure was really really good so overall i don't think i'll ever draft another team like this it also didn't have enough bolt turn for me that's something that every single one of my team has so much of that this had like nothing. I have Darmanitan, Mesprit, Raichu, Scyther. Raichu and Scyther weren't able to come that much. They were only able to come like Raichu came five games. Scyther only came three. Um, and like those with pivoting, like that's not enough for me. I like having five mons on a team that can pivot. That's that's just how I am. Um, and I did, and I wasn't able to gain enough momentum in some games because of it. So that that kind of sucks. But. Um, I tried out something new and I, I still performed well with it in my opinion. So overall, I'm not happy with the team. I'm happy with how I performed with a team that I didn't like. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, all this stuff here is like cool and all like hazard control, whatever. I kind of want to talk about the games because I feel like my games were just awesome. Like week one, I played sacred and that game versus sacred. I think I brought like Really good prep early on in the season. I played Nate. That game I, I should have lost. Honestly, I should have lost to Nate, but he uh, he made a misplay and he did lose 1-0 because of it. Um, but his misplay in his mind also did make sense, so I can understand why he made the play. Uh, beating Joe was phenomenal. That's where I realized how much I loved Armanitan. Like, I haven't used Armanitan since um, early, early, early Sun and Moon. Uh, so I haven't used it in a very long time. And uh, being able to use it again and have it do this well made me really, really happy. Um, this game, I choked. I made really bad misplays. I made very, very, very bad misplays this game. Um, especially with my Mega Aggron early on. Uh, so I think that was a really good learning, learning area for me. By this week, I knew that Toxic Spikes were just going to be the biggest issue to my team of all time. Like, at that point, Nate brought them. Um, uh... Cybertron brought them and then like after that I had like six other people that could have brought them so I knew I needed to get rid of Mega Aggron for Mega Sableye because just getting rid of one Mon for a Defogger wasn't going to help me <clears throat> it was it was going to like make him want to get him up and it just not affect me as much but the ones that it would affect my Darmanitan for example would still be hella annoying so this game showed me a lot and me losing like I was okay with it you know I'm, I'm always okay with losing um I hacks the hell out of Kyle. This is where Arbok was like stupid. <laughs> like it just, it hacks the hell out of a Volcanian and a Kingdra, which is hilarious to think about. Um, this game versus Tup was hard. It was very hard because of that um, Musharna. I used Musharna in NPA. I don't know why I didn't even prep for it. Like I didn't prep for it enough. I played poorly around it and I just didn't do what I needed to with Musharna, which sucks. Like, 
so i this right here showed me to like to make sure i prep for everything and if you notice like after this game i prepped for really passive walls so so much like um for example pukumuku versus gator i i over prepped for it um i'm trying to think of another fortress for um uh for Christian, I prepped for it heavily to make sure that it couldn't just like stay in on me and be really freaking annoying. So, uh, Registeel, I also prepped hardcore for Registeel versus uh, MV. So, uh, that game sh that game taught me a lot too. So, I'm I learned so much uh, from this season that I just forgot because I've been playing this format for so long that I've just gotten stuck in my ways and I haven't really like paid attention to much. So, uh, those two games taught me a lot. Uh, this game versus Envy was so freaking close. So I've heard a lot of people criticize me for this one. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that I made a misplay, um, which I don't agree with. I don't agree with at all. Um, so I've heard people say that <clears throat> whenever I was facing him, I should have spammed rocks as he defogged with Togekiss. Um, I don't think that was smart because... My Mesprit was the way that I pivoted out of Togekiss as he defogged. If I spammed Stealth Rocks, eventually he would either flinch me to death or I would lose my Mesprit, which sucked. And anytime that I brought in Milotic, he was able to defog for free. Like, I had nothing that my Milotic could do to his Togekiss. So if I spammed Rocks, it was literally a matter of, okay, I spam Rocks, potentially lose my Mesprit, and he can defog for free later, or while he defogs, I pivot and try to get in something to put in offensive pressure and then try to get up rocks later. So um, I can see where people could say that I could have stayed in and I could have gotten up rocks, but my Milotic had a lot of pressure on it that game. Remember, he had um, Victini that it needed to take multiple hits from. He had, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, he had Doug Trio, which I needed to be able to take a hit from. He had Togekiss, which I needed to be able to take a hit from to potentially weaken it a little bit. And then he had Azu, which I was faster than, so I didn't have a lot of bulk, which he ran a lot of speed on his Togekiss too. So it's not even like if he came in on rocks, I could have ice beamed him first. He ran like pretty much max speed Togekiss, which sucks. Um, it made it really, really difficult for me to be able to like pressure his Togekiss while he would defog. So, um, so Azu, what else did he bring? What else did he bring? I can't remember. I cannot remember. But like, my Milotic had a lot of pressure on it this game, so it was gonna be in often in the game, and it was in often in the game anyway. So, oh, um, regular Heracross. It, was, it also had pressure on it from regular Heracross. So, he could have defogged with Togekiss at any point in time, so me spamming rocks not only meant that I would lose my Mesprit, but I would also eventually just have him defog anyway on my Melodic. So I don't think I made a misplay here. I think I thought more of the offensive pressure right now than thinking of and thought about possible negative consequences rather than positives that could come out in the future. So I think it's like six of one, half a dozen of the other, but that's just my opinion. So uh, that game was still stupid close. It came down to a 50-50 at the end, um, which was either... I click Thousand Arrows versus his Togekiss and he stays in and I don't kill it as he kills me with Air Slash. Uh, or he goes into his um, Victini as I click uh, Continental Crush and he wins. So phenomenal, phenomenal close game, but really, really had a blast with this one. Playing Envy was amazing. I wish I would I got to play him again in playoffs, but uh, this game was another one that I got some criticisms over, which I think is silly because i still won and uh the play that i'm getting that i got criticisms over was me switching my darmanitan into a uh into an ente which could have easily been vinte he didn't have lefties so i could have used that as a clue but he also could have been resto chesto he also could have been uh, a 50 percent berry he could have still been bulky he could have been a lot of things and I had a Fizdef Milotic that could have switched in, uh, taken so little from Choice Banded Stone Edge, and then just pressured the rest of his team after that. So, like, this, I stand by my play. My opponent just made a good read. Like, that 
like I, I I can't get mad if my opponent makes a good read and I still make the play that I think would get me ahead and put a lot of offensive pressure on my opponent. So uh, this game, I still stand by my play with that. Um, especially because I wanted I wanted to keep up offensive pressure. I wanted to I wanted to be offensive in this game. I wanted to try to get a bigger win. So and I got a 3-0. Probably could have been larger if I didn't let Darmanitan die early game, but it is what it is. I also would have been, I also probably could have had Darmanitan be kill leader because of the, uh, because of the team. So, um, yeah, this game was the, my favorite game of the entire season. Um, my, my game versus Elliot when Alolan Raichu got all six kills, it, it just felt like, it felt like sweet revenge for when he six owed me with Thunderous. So, uh, this game was amazing. I just feel as though I had a really good matchup versus him, and without him bringing Scolipede, um, he struggled. So that was that. Um, this game versus Patty. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. Uh, Patty, I think, I think, I personally think Patty made a big misplay in prep by never bringing Drudagon. Um, I don't understand it. Like, so look at my team. Drudagon, hard, hard walls, Stack Attacka, Darmanitan, Scyther, Mega Sableye. Granted, I can Wisp it, stuff like that, but if he's Mold Breaker Toxic, if he's Mold Breaker Toxic Rocky Helmet, he still switches on on Sheer Force Life Orb uh, uh, Flare Blitzes from Darmanitan. He can still get up rocks. He can Toxic Mega Sableye. He can do everything by bringing Dredagon versus me. By bringing Dredagon, I'm forced to go into my Milotic literally every single time. And the second Milotic gets weakened versus his team, Lando 6 0s me. Lando literally beats me with Z Fly, Earthquake, SD, Rock Polish. I have nothing for it at all. The only thing I have for it is Scyther, which Scyther has a piss poor matchup versus him because he has a Red Bombi, Mega Zam. He had, um,. Drunagon, which I can't touch, Incineroar, which just intimidates me. Like, so I think if he went about it that way, he would have beat me both times, regular season and playoffs. I had nothing to beat it. So him not bringing uh, Drunagon either game threw me for a loop, and I I never I didn't understand it either time. It blew my mind. But he must have seen something that I didn't see. I watched his team builder, and um, I didn't really see him talk much about Drunagon, <laughs> which was weird. And this game. I also just prepped really poorly. Like I didn't, I was so worried about things like Calm Mind Recover Mega Zam that I went with memes to try to beat it down because I couldn't see any other way, which clearly I found a way in playoffs, uh, but I just couldn't in that week for some reason. So, so I think I just played and prepped poorly uh, and Patty played and prepped well um, and just got the better. I mean, he, he definitely, Definitely, definitely destroyed me. Uh, Rybombi destroyed me as well that game. So that game was something that I just... I took this game with a lot of uh, mental notes of what I was expecting in playoffs because the way I looked at it, I was either going to play um, Galactic Elliot or Patty in playoffs. And since I already lost to Patty, I felt as though I knew what I could expect. I knew I could expect really offensive Rybombi. I knew that I could expect... Mega Zam to be really, really stupid, bulky, and really offensive. And then with him bringing bulky Lando the first time, I could expect offensive Lando the second time. That's kind of what I went into. So this game really helped me out for playoffs. Whereas if I played Galactic Elliot, because I did so well with um, Alolan Raichu, I feel as though he would have prepped a lot for Alolan Raichu, which would have made it um, very difficult for me. It would have made it very, 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 very difficult for me to be able to, uh, to win again. He would have brought, he would have seen how scared I was of Scolipede the first time and he would have brought it and he would have just ran through me. So I definitely think that, uh, me playing Patty over Elliot was great in playoffs. Uh, this game versus Bill, <laughs> this was a weird game. Um, because he couldn't bring Necrozma and Necrozma was such a big problem for me in prep. Uh, and I didn't find out until we were about to play that he couldn't bring it. I was like, well, shit, there goes like 75% of my prep that I had. Uh, so that game was really weird. Um, 
He brought, what was, what was it, Sub Toxic, Freeze Dry, Hidden Power Ground, um, or no, Sub Roost, uh, Articuno, and that was annoying, but I don't know. I feel as though, I feel as though Bill really shot himself in the foot whenever he let his Primarina go down. If he didn't let his Primarina go down, my Darmanitan wouldn't have been able to, like, do as much work as it did, so, um, but yeah, this game. This game was fun. This was one of the most fun games I've had. I had in the season, uh, just because I was able to play and call and not it, not have it be memes. It would be somewhat serious, but still playing call with a friend. So, uh, this game versus Gator, I brought stuff that was left over in the PC. I didn't really try. He didn't really try. He still whopped me. Um, he just destroyed me. And in this game, one thing I thought about was that if he brings Pukamuku here. He's bringing Pukumuku again because he knows that Darmanitan runs through his team. Little did I know he would just like give me the middle finger and then not bring it in playoffs. So, <laughs> so he did bring Pukumuku to this game, didn't bring it to playoffs. Uh, memes. Wow, that was a fun memes game. If if Leo won, I played Galactic Elliot, and I think I wouldn't have even made it past round one of playoffs. He played Patty, and I don't think he would have made it past round one of playoffs either. He did not have a good matchup versus uh, Megazam plus Lando. So, plus Ride Bombi. He didn't have a good matchup versus that. So, uh, I think I think me winning this game helped us both out a little bit. And then, of course, now we're in playoffs. Uh, playing. Oh, man. This game I was super proud of because my extensive hours of prep combined with my multiple mock games just paid off. Like the hard work paid off. Uh, the, the many, many times that I spent um, doing stuff with like EVs and being in call and uh, getting help from some people, it paid off for this game. So this was probably my most proud game of the season. Uh, I did freeze him. However, so the freeze mattered in the moment because that means that he couldn't roost stall me, but eventually I would have gotten a scald burn. Scald was doing more than ice beam once he roosted up and eventually he would have to attack me. Like he wouldn't be able to roost forever while I just continuously attacked him. The second he attacked me, he lost his gold bat anyway, or he switched out and lost a different member of his team instead of his goal bat so while i think it mattered in the moment it really just shortened up the battle uh, i don't think it mattered in like the i don't think it mattered in the result i think it mattered in the differential uh and that's kind of where where i feel on that game uh patty still played really well uh for my prep i just i feel as though i feel as though i just out prepped him this time last time he out prepped me and he whooped me and this time i feel like i out prepped him and i won because of it so that's awesome uh this one gator out prepped me and he outplayed me too he made he made man that that heatran will-o-wisp play was so good whenever i went into my um whenever i went into my my Zygarde, if I clicked Leaf Storm there and I killed off his Heatran, then I would have had a plus two superior. He would have been forced into either Archaeops or Zara Aura, one of the two. Um, but because he will my Zygarde, it gave him free reign with so many different things, especially his Celebi. That Celebi was a big problem in all of my mocks, and because it was a big problem in all of my mocks, I knew it would be a big issue um, in game as well. So. Also, I do kind of want to touch on the hacks a little bit because I do think that the hacks, uh, they mattered in terms of differential, but I don't think they mattered in terms of the game at all. Um, so the crit on Mesprit, what it would have done is it would have given me a, uh, a different sack instead of my superior late in the game. I would have been able to keep my superior and I would have been able to leave storm the Keldeo or I would have been able to, um, bring in Keldeo. I'm sorry, I would have been able to bring in Superior early on. He had to sack off Donphan, uh, then bring in his Archaeops, U-turn or go for an attack, then bring in his Keldeo, and then I I sack off my Melodic to Keldeo, bring in Superior again, click Leaf Storm, kill Keldeo, he goes into Archaeops and beats me 1-0. So I think, that, I think that the crit mattered in terms of 
differential, but I think he still would have had enough Mons and Sacks available to be able to win the game no matter what. So I don't think that the Cradle Mesprit mattered, like literally at all. It just mattered in terms of differential. He still would have won. What I do think really hurt me was the combination of the Cradle Mesprit plus the damage roll on Stack Attacka. So if I had the damage roll on Stack Attacka plus Superior left, I could have had an extra sack versus like Don Fan or something, and I would have been able to pressure more uh, with the combination of Stack Attacka, Milotic, Zygarde, and Superior. So I do think that that like would that would have given me a chance, a slim chance, but it would have given me a chance to win. And I think that that's what I need. I needed the no crit plus the damage rolls to be friendly with Zero Aura. But again, it like it's damage rolls. You can't consider that hacks and that's the game we play so i lost and uh, i'm super happy with that game i'm super happy with how i prepped um i brought some really interesting stuff uh, i really prepped hard for puke muku and we didn't when he didn't bring it that really just hurt my entire game plan so that is uh that is my season of games uh i'm super happy with everything this season was phenomenal uh i lost a few i won a few um and overall I'm just super grateful and I hope that I made you guys proud. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me this season. If you did, please make sure to leave a like down below and hopefully I'll be in next season in Sword and Shield. I'm getting the game day one. Uh, I'm going to be releasing an update video about some stuff that I'm doing up until Sword and Shield. So if you guys want to watch that, please make sure to watch that video. Um, and I'm hoping to be invited back for a Sword and Shield season. Uh, but guys, with that... I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I want to thank you, Dan, one more time. And uh, I want to thank Joey and all my buddies, uh, everybody in WB. Thank you for making WB absolutely phenomenal. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching and hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.